Jean-Luc Picard is back for a new adventure in Star Trek Picard, once again boldly going where no one has gone before. The CBS All Access show is filled with callbacks to Star Trek past, including some that might elude even the most dedicated of fans. After opening with a flashback to Picard's resignation from Starfleet 14 years earlier, the third episode of Picard titled The End is the Beginning finds the erstwhile admiral paying a visit to his former first officer Rafi, who was fired from Starfleet after Picard resigned. Rafi is now living in a self-described hovel in the Vasquez Rocks, where it seems she passes her time getting high and trying to forget the years she spent working alongside Picard. However, for longtime Star Trek fans, the Vasquez Rocks are more than just a cool location for Rafi to park her 24th century trailer. The Vasquez Rocks Natural Area Park, located in the Sierra Polona Mountains in Northern California, has been a frequent shooting location for past Star Trek productions, including episodes of the original series, The Next Generation, Voyager, and Enterprise, along with scenes in the film Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, J.J. Abrams' 2009 Star Trek, and its 2013 sequel, Star Trek Into Darkness. As a matter of fact, the Vasquez Rocks have been featured so prominently within Star Trek lore that the location has even been nicknamed Kirk's Rock. When Picard meets his new pilot for hire, Cristobal Chris Rios, it's under less than ideal circumstances, as Rios is in the process of having a piece of titanium shrapnel removed from his shoulder. In order for the emergency medical hologram to access the injury, Rios is shirtless, giving us a clear view at the prominent mermaid tattoo on his upper left arm. Rios' ship is named the La Serena, which translates from Spanish as the mermaid. It makes sense that Rios would have such a strong personal connection to his ship that he'd want to permanently mark it on his body, but his choice to name his ship the Mermaid could also be a hint that Rios and Picard may have more in common than it might appear. Do I detect a certain bitterness towards Starfleet? Mermaids and mermaid tattoos have long been associated with a romanticized image of sailors heading out on perilous voyages, which is how Picard often seemed to view his role as the commander of a Federation starship. This was made plain by the opening of Star Trek Generations, in which Picard and the crew of the Enterprise stepped into their equivalent roles as officers on a 19th century naval ship. Just imagine what it was like. No engines, no computers, just the wind and the sea stars to guide you. Rios' embracing of such a classic maritime symbol may indicate that despite their apparent differences, Rios and Picard may in fact be kindred spirits. After they meet, Picard notices that Rios is in the middle of reading a hardcover version of The Tragic Sense of Life by Miguel Unamuno. Written in 1912, it's a philosophical essay following the author's struggle to reconcile man's pursuit of wisdom, knowledge, and reason with his belief that those pursuits and consciousness in general actually work in opposition to leading a happy life. The particular passage that Rios is reading later on in the episode on page 140 of the book deals with the link between consciousness and suffering, in which Unamuno muses, how do we know that we exist if we do not suffer, little or much? How can we turn upon ourselves, acquire reflective consciousness, save by suffering? While Picard hasn't explicitly shown to be a fan of this author, it's well established that he's a learned, philosophical man. Rios' interest in philosophy is yet another clue that the pilot may have more in common with the Admiral than meets the eye. But the passage Rios was reading also seems to point somewhat ominously to the themes of sentience and personhood that so strongly define Picard. Unamuno argues that suffering is essential to consciousness and that without it we have no way of knowing that we are truly alive a philosophy that we may see revisited as we learn more about Dodge and Soji's origins and the circumstances leading up to the synthetic uprising. Despite Rafi's insistence that she wants no part of Picard's new mission, he sends her all of the information he has on Bruce Maddox's research anyway, and she can't help digging into it. As Rafi sifts through the files from the Daystrom Institute, there's a brief shot of her screen on which the words Crypto Algorithm Identification Gorn Egg can be read. The Gorn are a reptilian alien species first introduced on the classic Trek episode Arena, in which Captain Kirk is transported to the surface of a rocky planet filmed at the Vasquez Rocks by aliens called the Metrones, and told he must battle the captain of an opposing Gorn ship to the death. Only the winner ship and crew will survive. Kirk and the Gorn captain both manage to injure one another, but Kirk ultimately decides to show mercy and spare the Gorn's life, which in turn leads to both crews being spared by the Metrones. No, I won't kill him. Do you hear? You'll have to get your entertainment someplace else. At the end of Arena, the Metrones tell Kirk that while humans are a savage race, there is hope for them due to their capacity to show mercy to their enemies. 
Conversely, the beginning of Picard's third episode finds Picard and Rafi lamenting that the Federation is refusing to show mercy to the Romulans, capitulating instead to intolerance and fear. Had Kirk given into those same tendencies in Arena, it would have led to a far different and more disastrous outcome. Despite Rios' many personal similarities to Picard, the pilot is initially reluctant to agree to help the former Starfleet Admiral when they first meet. Later, when Rios is alone in his quarters, the emergency medical hologram appears and attempts to talk Rios into helping Picard, despite his reservations. So, are we excited? Intimidated. Maybe a teensy bit starstruck. As the EMH runs down his laundry list of Picard's accomplishments, he mentions that Picard was chief contact with the Q Continuum, which is a reference to both the pilot episode and series finale of Star Trek The Next Generation, as well as a number of notable episodes during the series' run. Picard's encounters with Q also led to the first introduction of and subsequent attacks by the Borg. He also mentions that Picard was Arbiter of Succession for the Klingon Empire, which was already nodded to in Picard's premiere episode, and that he was captain of the Enterprise D&E, a reference that needs no explanation. The EMH wraps up his exaltations of Picard by name-dropping that he worked alongside the Great Spock, calling back to the Next Generation episode, Unification, and could also be a nod to Spock's role in attempting to prevent the Romulan supernova, as explained in 2009 Star Trek. While most of Picard's storyline takes place on Earth, all of Daj's twin sister Soji's scenes have been set aboard a Romulan reclamation station on a repurposed Borg cube, on which she encounters an ex-Borg drone named Hugh. Hugh first appeared in the Next Generation episode, I, Borg, which saw the Enterprise crew encounter a young Borg drone who had been abandoned by the Collective. Although Picard initially sees the Borg as nothing more than a way to help him bring down the Collective, he ultimately is forced to recognize his sentience and personhood when the drone begins exhibiting signs of individuality and gives himself the name Hugh. I will not assist you. I. Hugh pops up again in the two-part TNG episode, Descent where it is revealed that after rejoining the Collective, his sense of individuality spread to his entire cube, and they were cut off from the Collective. In Descent, Hugh proved himself a loyal ally of Picard and the Enterprise, rescuing several members of the crew, and resisting Data's megalomaniacal brother, Lore. You're kind of a know-it-all, aren't you? It's hard to predict what's in store for Hugh on Picard, but if Hugh's past history with the Admiral are any indication, he may prove to be an important, albeit unexpected, ally for Picard and his rogue crew. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.